Hi. So, last episode, Frip discussed or shared all the costs involved in buying a Leopard 45 plus the aftermarket stuffies. All the nice, the nicest, niceties. And um, as he mentioned, this week I am doing which store are we going to get to do our own moonshining on Sisu. Um, I'm on my way to a company called Brewcraft. Their stock finally arrived. We've been waiting for over a month for it to come through to customs. So I'm on my way there and they're going to explain. There's three different units available. There's an air stall. There's the Turbo 500. I think that's the same one that um, Dallas had or has got. And then there's the uh, pot, a lambic pot stall. So Ryan and Nick will explain to us which one is which and then we have to make up our minds which one we're going to have. So let's go check them out and see what they have to say. Ryan, he's going to explain yeah. what what we should buy, what is going to be best for the boat for Sisu. So what if, what's the first well, item that you're going to So what we'd like, we'll, I'm going to give you a little breakdown of three different setups to three little different uh, distilling operations. So we're going to start with a very entry level one, which is an awesome little still. The first one, air stall. Air stall. So this, uh, this is a complete uh, air stall package. What's nice about it is it's, uh, it's exactly what it says, it's an air stall. So you don't need to let it run with water to cool and dispense to um, okay. distillate your water. So in the package comes uh, your fermenter, I'll break it down to show you now. Okay, the Yatis, this is nice, small and compact, it doesn't take a lot of space. And then, uh, obviously you've got your air stall. This is your air stall. As it says, it runs on air, it cools it down. So whereas a, a normal still would use water to cool the alcohol down, to condense it, and then it'll drip out. So what's nice about it is a nice small little compact unit. It's just nice and small. Perfect. A little 5 litre air still. So you put your, your wash inside you, your alcohol inside you, which uh, Nick's going to show you how to make a wash just now in the next little series. Uh, we'll just do a bigger one, this is just a smaller scarlet. So you put it in there, turn it on. And uh, it's just going to drip the alcohol through here, which has your catcher. And how long does the, I think you call it wash, eh? A wash. How long does this have to stay here before you put it in there? So, in this unit? Yeah, so your wash, your wash is basically uh, making, making your alcohol. So the yeast eats the sugars, and in turn the sugars produce, uh, they give off CO2, and obviously the other byproduct is alcohol. So in your wash, when you mix it in here, you're probably going to get about 15% uh, alcohol. And then that will go. 1.5. Yeah. And it's, and it's 15 litres of it, so you're going to do three, three little runs of this. How uh, long just, does one run take? Oh, it take? Fermentation, good point. Yeah, the fermentation will take between 5 to about 10 days. Okay, so similarly to the little, the little air still, um, this is just a much bigger skull. And it's not an air still, uh, which is like a pot still. Uh, this one's going to be a reflux, which is a column like that. It's got a T500. So inside, inside this uh, complete distillery kit also comes with everything. It's got your fermenter. Wow, so that's fermenter. quite a big difference. It's also got an um, easy filter. What's nice is the easy filter just uh, just cleans the alcohol, just gives it alcohol one more little thing. Just takes it. A little bit of yeah. Brilliant. So that's, that's also a nice little feature. So inside the, the complete, inside the, the kitchen, with the jug, the catching jug. Oh, so this comes complete once yeah. or when you buy the unit. So all this right. included. So it's got the hydrometer, the alcohol meter, because to measure the strength of the alcohol. Because uh -huh. so obviously you don't want to be drinking 60% alcohol. And the uh, two sips will be down on your back. You know, in so South Africa, I think they call it Mampur or something mm -hmm. like that. Where the grandfathers used to make it. Yeah, that's strong. Everyone's got a bottle of Mampur in their <laughs> yeah. 
So inside there the hydrometry, the bottle, you've got some essences, flavors, liqueurs. So it's really, really uh, a, a, such a cool package. Then obviously we need to make the uh, alcohol, like I said earlier, like the wash. So here we've got turbo sugar. So the turbo sugar with the turbo yeast, we're going to mix it in here. Nick's going to show you how to go through that just now. And those little black? Those are, those are little bits of carbon. carbon. So it just helps make your wash just a little bit cleaner as well, which is so cool. Alright, so also in the, in the package you can have an option, you can take the, uh, this, we've got two little, we've got a, a copper one, or we've got a stainless one, so you can open that one up. This is, uh, this is the baby that actually makes the alcohol. Uh -huh. Alright, so every, every column, so you've got the copper one, and you've got the stainless one, both of them are I think we're going to make the same good quality alcohol. Because it's all right. about the inside, eh? That's right. What's happening on the inside. So they've all got serial numbers, so you need to register your still with the SARS. Okay? You need to register it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. In South Africa? In South Africa. But if you're from outside of South Africa, how is that New, New Zealand, New Zealand's fine. Uh, UK is fine. I think America, they've got to register as well. So oh, okay. some countries, I think every country you go to you're on your boat, just, just check it out prior, you know? Don't want to okay. be arrested, do you? <laughs> so you have to carry that with you on the boat wherever you go, yeah. just to have the proper knife. Okay. Just in case, I'll just check it out. Okay. You know? Awesome. So inside here, yeah, so this would go on top of the boiler. So this, uh, this is your boiler. So the wash, the wash that Nick's going to make, mm -hmm. with the sugar to make, also alcohol up to about 16, 17, 18 percent is going to go from, from your fermenter okay. into here. And we're going to start boiling it. All right. Here we go. And then this this will go onto here. So this will. This so it's very it's straightforward and easy to handle. Very simple, very simple. And you know, there's good guidelines. If you go into the internet, there's YouTube for everything. How to make the wash, how to distill it, how to put it through the filter, how to clean it, how to. That's very thorough. So, so for the first briefing, you YouTube, you can look at sailing sisu. <laughs> this still is a uh, reflux still. So what happens is it's going to pull through very high quality alcohol, nice clean alcohol. So it's going to bring out, so when it distills, it's called a reflux. So inside it has a whole lot of packings. So the alcohol will evaporate first because the alcohol evaporates at uh, 78 degrees when it's starting to boil. So it'll come off first and it'll go up and then it'll, it'll go up and it'll get through some copper and it gets condensed through here. And then up drops alcohol uh, between 90, it's a very efficient still, it's very efficient. Between 92 and about 94% alcohol. Alright, so it's very strong. Okay. <laughs> so hence it's called a reflux. So what happens is the alcohol, mo alcohol molecules are only ones that can get through here. And there's some copper here that would reduce it, takes out the sulfurs and then uh, drips out. And inside here are the water molecules. The water molecules being a little bit bigger and heavier than alcohol. They collect together inside and they drop back down. Collect in and they drop back down. Okay. That's the reflux. And where does your water come in the cool So the water is going to come in from here. On the side. It's okay. gonna, uh, so it's going to come in from the bottom here. comes in the bottom here. And it goes up and out and then it condensed out here. So it drips out here. Okay. So you can recycle the water if you catch it and reuse yeah. it yeah. for washing or whatever you want to do. We can just Brilliant. have a little uh, submersible pump. Just recirculate and that's it. So this one, so once you've diluted it down, you've gone through, you've got 92% alcohol, mm -hmm. you dilute it down with water to 40% alcohol. Maybe that made it to 42% if you're dairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you, so when you put it through, you dilute it down, then it goes into the, so uh, the second stage. This is the filter. Or the third stage, yeah. yeah the third. So we'll go through a filter and eat, so it will drip down. It'll take 10 days in the fermenter. To ferment, yeah, and then inside it will take about four hours. And how many liters of alcohol can we get out of this one? This one, alcohol, you'll probably get about just over three liters at 92 percent. So you're going to get about you're going to get about, about mm, six liters of 40 percent, or yeah. even more. So you you get about eight bottles out. Okay. Like, yeah. So I think this is this is going to be the third one that I mentioned just now. The pot, it, pot, the pot store. The pot store. Yeah. The alembic pot, pot store. store. Yeah. yeah, that's the other option. So, so this is your lambic dome. So it's just this bit that changes. It's okay. just this. So you can still use the same boiler. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to go and buy a new boiler. You just need to buy the extra. pot stall. So a pot stall, like you see them in, uh, when they're making brandies and stuff, it's made out of a pot stall. So here we're using sugar to ferment to make the alcohol. Whereas uh, brandy, they'll use grapes. Uh, moonshine, they'll use corn. Uh -huh. um, 
whiskies, I'd use uh, either corn whiskey or you can use malt like you do in a beer, proper malt you mash it and things like that. So this is what you'd use to bring out more flavour. Okay. But like also Mantur when you get that peach smell and things, this will bring through a lot lot more flavour, which this one will just strip it clean. So this just goes on here, turn it, and clamps it down, like that, you know. Very nice looking. And then the uh, same concept, you've got the water coming in here. So the alcohol is getting up here, it's distilling up here and it's coming through here okay. in, in, in steam format. And then it gets condensed, so the condensed. water goes in here, comes out there, condensed, and then... Okay. And it drips. Nice. Well, then our gins are... Uh, Crazy now, we've got some juniper berries and stuff. So, what I'm going to show you here. Oh, <coughs> so inside you have a gin basket. Oh, wow. Oops. So, what, what would happen is you put your juniper berries and stuff inside you, and then uh, pack, you put all your juniper berries, uh, maybe a little bit of lemon zest, some peppercorns. Ladies, do you hear that uh, one? And then you're going to put this on here. Black pepper and, and strawberry. Oh, that could also work a bit. Anything goes. The mine's going already. So then we're going to there. Sure, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and then you just put it on, and the same thing is going to just all. And then the same quantities as well. Same quantities, yeah. As with the T5 and. The difference is this will bring the alcohol out at, let's say, 80% to 85%, and then it will reduce down. Okay. It'll go right down to 20%. So when they say a pot still is triple distilled, so you first put your stuff in, you do a stripping run. We just take the alcohol out, and we take that, uh -huh. and we put it back in for a That's second run. Again. So we just oh, do it twice. This yeah. Okay, now we're on to that, the, the surprise one at the end, the double whammy one. What's it called? The, the Grain Father. So Grain Father, it's a, hence the word Grain Father, it's, a, it's an all-grain brewing system. Right. right, so you're making your beer from scratch. So when you're going to make your beer from scratch, you can do the same with your whiskies. Mm -hmm. So you'll get different types of malts and things to make a single malt whiskey and uh, this is the malt that would make the whiskey. So we can make alcohol and we can make beer. Yeah. Yep. And we know that beer hasn't got alcohol but you know, <laughs> you know kind of know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you can make anything just like you said. As a brewing system what you do is you put your malt in here. Malt will be going into there. Obviously we put the water in first mm -hmm. and then you put the top lid on, top full top plate on. What's great about this new one, they've got a, a Bluetooth, a Bluetooth uh, controller. So if you've got a nice uh, recipe of any beer that you see, you can just put your phone on, put onto Bluetooth, and it'll do all the mashing, temperatures, everything yeah. for you. So that's that great. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's, that's how this one will work. So it'll keep on circulating through. We'll do that for an hour. Then we're going to mash out. And for a beer, once you finish your mash, so just the hour and then it's done. A mash, just your mash process, yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to take this. And then we're going to mash, we're going to sparge. So you would have... It's almost like both terminology, all these yeah. words, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so now we're taking the malt out of the, the water. So it's like a sieve, oh, everything, the liquids run down. Exactly. And then we're going to take, we're going to take a, a, some hot water at 75 degrees. And we're going to rinse the grain. So you can imagine there's all little bits of sugar still around the grain. So now it's, it's called sparging. So okay. we're rinsing that down. It's going to go into the bottom there. And when we finish with this, you can discard it or you can make some dog biscuits out of the malt. Oh, wow. And then you're going to put it onto boil now. You're going to start to boil it. So through this is now the hop addition to make the beer. But at this stage, that's where you'd stop where you want to make mm, whiskey. Whiskies. Because whiskey doesn't have hops in it, mm. obviously. So once, you, so once it goes from here, it goes into your fermenter. Oh, so I'm going to your fermenter again to, make, to get it fermented out, to make the alcohol in the fermenter. Then from the fermenter, you can put it back into the grain father, and now you can start boiling it. And oh, you can wow. actually do, you can distill with this unit as well. Yeah, so you can, make beer, you can make beer from scratch, you can make whiskey from scratch. Okay, now it's Nick's turn, and he's going to do the washing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to wash our fermenter out. Okay, so. Over here, I've got my cold water detergent. We're going to take five liters of water. You wash. see, there is washing involved. No <laughs> sterilizer. Okay. Now so, the fun begins. Now, what we're going to do is, when making a wash, you've washed and sterilized your fermenter. So, 
the way you make wash is with turbo sugar. Okay? What you do is you take three liters of boiling hot water, which I'm going to grab over here. So this is sugar. This is sugar, correct. And would you be able, if you can't get hold of this, would you be able to use normal sugar? Uh, domestic, domestic you, you sugar? could use normal sugar. I would suggest using turbo carbon. So, Petra, I'm going to put you to work here. You'll go to school. Absolutely. When, why don't I have one of these when my kids were small? <laughs> leave a good inference. Okay, so what you're going to do is pour the turbo sugar into the, into the hot water. And you stir while it is pouring. Ew, I must admit this doesn't look appetizing. But now if you think about the end product of this you're going to forget about what this looks like. So what you're going to do is, as you busy stirring, I'm going to be pouring the cold water. Okay, so we've got, we've got a wash going. We're just getting a little bit more water. Once that's done, we're going to measure the gravity of the, of the wash. So what the gravity is, we use a hydrometer and you measure the amount of sugar is in the beer. Okay? So starting off you'll have a high gravity and the more the heat eats and the, uh, and it's your, your wash is fermenting, the lower your gravity, gravity will be. And there's a calculation that you do from your original gravity, which is your first measurement, and your final gravity, which is your last measurement, and that will determine the amount of alcohol that is that has been produced by your yeast. Can I okay. pour well, this in? Pour it in. <laughs> yeah. So the ideal temperature for this wash, uh, as you pitch your yeast, is 30 degrees Celsius, and you want and and all the information you'll see is on the pack of yeast. So what are you doing now? Okay. So now I'm just taking a little bit of the wash out. So that we can measure. Okay, now you can see the color. That is what the color. I said it does not look appetizing. Okay, so Patrick, what you're going to do is you're going to stick the hydrometer inside, like that. Okay, now that's going to tell us what the original gravity is. Always make sure when doing a wash, you make notes. Okay, so you get yourself a little notebook and write down today's date, the original gravity, which is a 1090. And that is where you'll be starting off. Okay? So, yeah, so 1.090. Once fermentation is done, you'll see the hydrometer will float deeper down and it will stop at about a 0 0.990. Uh, and that's where you really Sounds really like a lot. Measure that it's done. Things do remain. Okay. Remember. So, made a note. Have a taste. No, have a taste. No, have a taste. You think so? No, I should close my eyes, not my nose. Eh? <laughs> oh wow, it's sweet. It's very sweet. Okay. I'll never believe that it can taste like this. <laughs> okay, so now what you're going to do is, uh, Petri, do you want to grab your paddle again? Ooh. I'm the stirrer, not the stirrer, I'm the stirrer. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do when pitching your piece? You want to pour it over and then give it a bigger stir. Okay, what's going oh, you need to do that, it's like a washing machine section. You see again washing. Mm. I rest my case. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, now, what happens during, during fermentation? You saw we've got a bit of, a bit of the black glue, mm. little charcoal bits inside. Okay, now that's carbon. So what you want to do is, you want to add some turbo carbon to it as well. And what that does is, during fermentation, it just removes any of the nasty flavours that get produced. Pour that in. Oh, this is like serious black stuff. Yeah, so this is carbon. This is, is black. Ew, yeah. this is gooey as well. This is your <laughs> airlock. So what happens is, while the yeast is busy, is busy fermenting the wash, what, what happens is it creates ethanol as well as CO2. You want the CO2 to escape from your fermenter, but you don't want anything to come in. So what this does is, you put a bit of water inside there. Oh, so this is like a U-trap in, in a basin. Correct. Yeah. That's right. That just goes inside. Just like that. Pop your lid on. And then that. And this is now This is now where the day is now. This is where the patient comes in. This is, this is, this is where, the, where the patient's coming. Okay, thank you. Um,
Brian and Nick, I think that was so informative, you guys. It's just amazing. So, uh, what have you decided on now? Which, which package are you going to take? Well, what they've told us, and given our circumstances where we're going to be, I think on the boat, I'm going to go for the D500. I think both space wise, and it's a simple method of getting the purest, purest alcohol. <laughs> and then, you guys, for whoever's close in Gateng, They've, on the 1st of September, they've got a moonshine meet yeah, at their premises. So yes, up in when you're in the, in the area. And Looking if you just... Does that. Yep. And just mention Sisu. And I'm sure you guys are going to look after them at a good price. For sure. For sure. That'll be good. Thank you. Well, thanks again. Ocean blue, whoa, land in sight.